we are waiting for 3.9, but all is not lost. With 3.9 is also coming persistence. We get to keep our monies and our things. And with keeping those monies and things, we have bought ourselves with in-game money, a 315P. What are we gonna do with this ship? Well, we're gonna do the unusual like we always do on this channel. We're gonna try to use this as a light freighter trading ship and see how much money we can make. So the day has finally come. I've made enough money in the game to be able to buy this 315P, and you can buy it at Astro Armada on Area 18 at Art Corp. And there we go, the purchase is complete. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. I decided while I was already here at Art Corp, I would just go ahead and buy some of the material they had. Now they don't have very much, but you can buy some scrap. There's really two places to be able to buy scrap here. You can buy it at the administrative office, but it's pretty expensive. The cheaper place to get it is at the Trade Development Division. And there we go all filled up with cargo. Now this ship is really interesting. It comes with almost all stealth components across the coolers and the power plant and things like that. But the one component, which is the quantum drive, is an industrial class component. But it is class C. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this default loadout because the industrial components do last a long time and are fairly fuel efficient. It's a little weird they combine the stealth components that have that low signature with an industrial component that has a very high signature, but I think that's actually what I want if I'm going to be using this ship for trade. I might change this default loadout later, but we're just going to stick with the default for right now. Now I can see that I start out with about 700 quantum fuel, and it's going to take 245 to get out to Crusader. It's pretty far, but I think we can make it. That's less than half my fuel, which is really nice. This means I can go all the way across the solar system, even fly around, do a number of quantum jumps locally, do some trading, and get all the way back to the other side without having to refuel. If I was going to use this ship for trade, I don't want to be stopping every time I deliver something to be able to fill it up. So this is really good. I like this. So here we are at Port Olisar. Let's sell our goods and see what we got. All right. so. 2,220, that's not bad. We bought it for 1,620 for a nice little profit of 600. Now that's not a huge amount of money, but for scrap, that's not bad. We'll be making a lot more money as we buy more expensive goods, but we also have to risk more of our own money. That's a whole risk versus reward kind of thing. I've got a whole separate video out just about that. But I'm pretty pleased with the run that we just did. That's nice, nice and successful, easy money. So let's invest a little bit of money now. I'm gonna buy some medical supplies here at Port Olisar. You can get them relatively cheap, although they are a little bit cheaper at the research stations. Now, one of the problems with actually buying medical supplies at Port Olisar is that it is an easily accessible port. It's one of the few commodities to buy that's profitable and everyone purchases medical supplies from here. So they're often in very short supply. So I'm just gonna pick up a few and we're gonna take these over to Benson to sell. Now you might be wondering at this point, well, how do I know where to sell these things? You've got a lot of different options to find out. One of the options that a lot of people use is to use the internet. And Galog actually turns out to be one of the very popular trading information sites where you can go. But I found that Galog is actually not that accurate in a lot of different ways. It really doesn't tell you whether they actually still have a demand for those. Maybe that market's already flooded. One half portion. And a lot of times even the prices are way off. So out of curiosity, I checked Galog. We went here to Benson to sell these medical supplies. I know they do buy some. And Galog said they sold for 17.04, actually less than what we even bought them for here at Port Olisar, but in reality, you can see they're selling for a lot more. So that's a huge difference in what the price is. It's not just a few cents. 
I also really don't like to use the internet because it takes some gameplay away from me. I feel like I'm not actually exploring, investigating, and learning on my own. The potential for knowledge and advancement. I like traveling around the verse and just doing things for myself. It's just a little bit more fun for me that way. Although, occasionally, an internet site will help you out if you get stuck on where to sell something. So having sold the medical supplies, I'm gonna pick up some fluorine. This is also another commodity I've traded in the past, and they like to buy fluorine at the research outposts. So we're gonna pick some up here and go over to sell and we'll go to another moon to sell it. Okay, all things considered, we can see that we've made a nice little profit here. It was similar to the scrap. We made right around 600 alpha UEC, not a huge profit, but it was a very short little hop. It only took a few minutes to get from Yella over to Selen and sell this stuff. So we're gonna to try to go all in here and buy all these medical supplies. Now the nice thing about trading in a small ship is that all in is kind of relative, right? So we're really only investing about 20,000 of our Alpha UEC. It's still a fair bit of money, but if we were to lose it, we could get that back with just two or three good delivery missions, something like that. So. It's a big investment, but not that big. So it makes this small cargo ship type trading just fun. There's some risk, but you're not risking everything. So we're gonna take this over to Galette Family Farms and try to sell it. All right, so Galette doesn't really want all of it. They really only want about two SCU worth. So we really weren't able to sell it. This is another one of these examples where a particular location was saturated. So even though they might want a few thousand of these, right now they only want a couple hundred. But all is not lost. We're gonna take this over to the Terra Mills Hydro Farm, also here on Selen, and see if they want it. And bam, they do want it. In fact, they want it for a higher price. So this was great. I'm actually glad that Galette didn't buy it all at that low price. And probably it was at the lower price, because someone had been there pretty recently, sold their goods and driven the price down. There is some degree of dynamics in the prices of things here in the verse right now. It's gonna be a lot more dynamic in the near future, but this is something that I really like to see. All right, while we're here at the Terra Mills, we're gonna buy distilled spirits. I really like selling and buying distilled spirits as a commodity. For some reason, it just always works out well for me. So with another short little jump right here on Selen, we're gonna go over to Tram and Myers and sell these distilled spirits. Another thing I really like about this small ship trading is that you can fit this ship in anywhere. You don't really even need a landing pad. You can go almost right up to the front door and set it down. This 315P, just like the Aurora and some of the other small ships, will fit in almost any little space, which is really nice. It's just something you can just scramble about with and set down anywhere. And you can see we made a nice little profit of 800, which is pretty good. I mean, that's not great, but considering we just jumped around the moon a little bit, that's not bad. We're gonna buy some more product here. Now, I really wish this Laranite had not been completely sold out but we're gonna buy some diamonds because I'm pretty sure that you can do a long run of diamonds all the way out to Hurston and make a nice tidy profit there. It always comes down to profit with you people, doesn't it? Now we could sell this really close. We could just go to Port Olasar or Grim Hex, sell them, it's a very short little hop over there, but I believe the profit margin is gonna be a lot higher on a commodity like this the farther we take it. So we're just gonna take our chances and see what we can make on these diamonds. And look at that, bam, 1,800 credits. Now that's the kind of return that we want. So let's take a look at our total after one hour. So we have almost 6,500 credits that we've earned with one hour of trading on a small ship. So it is possible to make some money, but we were also moving small goods, scrap and some other things, selling them in small quantities. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and see what happens for the next hour. So we did about another hour of trading and I did stay away from some of the low value commodities, some of the scraps and fluorines, the things that really didn't seem to bring a large return. Tried to stick with things would be a little bit more, you know, 800 or more. 
And it turns out that I did find some Laranite and Astatane. Pick that up. Here's my last cell. I'll show you that. And bam, there you go. My total now is almost 10,000 for about the last hour of trading. That's not too bad. I was actually pretty happy that I was able to increase that total. And I will tell you that I wasn't really running around. I wasn't sprinting around like a madman, running as fast as I could, even trying to do things as fast as I could. I was moving rather slowly and enjoying the verse. This 315 did turn out to be a pretty capable ship, I felt, if you wanted to do some light cargo hauling. Another thing that I did like about this was its fuel economy. Now the Origin ships are known to have this kind of hydrogen fuel scooping ability, so they passively regenerate a lot of their hydrogen fuel, which is the most expensive one. And here, sitting on this pad, just while I went in and bought some goods and came back, it regenerated a whole percent. So anytime that I would land the ship, I'd just leave the engines running, and that did seem to regenerate a good bit of juice for me. I hope you liked seeing the 315P in action, doing something a little bit beyond its normal pathfinding ability, which isn't in game, and doing some trading with it. I think if a person bought this as a starter ship, it would be very capable. And of course, the 315 has a whole host of other capabilities to run delivery boxes, do light fighting, and a lot of other things we didn't even get into. Don't forget to like and subscribe, use my referral code and all that jazz, and I'll be talking to you later.